Hello there. Quite a nice looking satellite picture at the moment showing an area of low pressure with cloud wrapped around around its centre around the North Sea at the moment. That's bringing rain and some strong winds for the time of year across the United Kingdom. It's also pushing this band of rain in across towards uh, parts of southern Europe. So the rain heavy and thundery as it moves into parts of northern Italy, for example. And we've got some strong winds to come across northeast Europe as well. So quite a lot going on weather wise. Now on Sunday, Towards the southeast of Europe, it's a mainly dry picture with warm spells of sunshine. Temperatures generally into the high 20s to low 30s. Warm as well as we move into Poland, but we have this band of rain heading in. So that rain's going to be heavy and thundery at times. To the north of this, for parts of Norway, Sweden, Finland and the northwest of Russia, we've got some strong winds around, gusts reaching around 70 kilometers an hour at times during Sunday. Now those winds, still quite brisk on Monday, will begin to ease somewhat as our band of rain moves into Eastern Europe. Notice temperatures dropping away in Berlin, highs of 21 degrees here. 20 the top temperature in Paris with a risk of a few showers. Those showers though do clear away as we head towards the middle part of the week for a time. We've got some sunshine in Madrid where the weather is set to get a little bit warmer in the week ahead. Warm sunshine to start off with with Moscow. It stays warm, but we'll see some showers breaking out later in the week ahead. Hong Kong is still the best uh, gateway uh, where East meets West. Choosing Hong Kong as a regional headquarters, it really puts us in a central spot in Asia Pacific. Hong Kong is definitely a land of startups and talents. The ecosystem is growing. It's just a great city that offers so many different things to so many different people. Your ERP and database vendors may not want you to know who we are. Maybe it's because we've supported over 3,000 Oracle and SAP clients. Maybe it's because we've saved those clients billions of US dollars. Because we're a global partner you can trust a partner who could significantly cut your support costs and help you innovate, drive growth. It's time to expect more. Other companies do software. We do support. Romini Street. Now showing on BBC Real. Mon cher Ahmad, je crois que tu as été surpris, mais aussi heureux, quand Louis t'a demandé si tu étais d'accord pour jouer dans son film. C'est où ton pays? Ah, uh, Afghanistan. En mis pagos hay un árbol que del olvido se llama. Watch the film now at bbc.com slash real. The hits to the economy are staggering. It's happening in nearly every single country. This virus respects no borders. Look at all these businesses. Closed. That one. Closed. Next door. Closed. It's unprecedented, historic, never before in the history of oil craving has the price fallen below zero. Travel restrictions are decimating the airline industry, with many saying it's just a matter of time before another carrier goes bust. Three quarters of America's economy depend on consumer we're spending. It is hammering the once robust American economy. South Africa's economic hardship will continue. The economy is set to contract by over 6%. In Wuhan, China, where the global pandemic started, people are slowly going back to work. What happens to these companies financially when this is all over? There is no simple trade-off between health and the economy. On BBC World News, our weekly in-depth look at the economic trends that are shaping Africa's future in Business Africa.
This is In Business Africa. I'm Lerato Mbele in Parkhurst, Johannesburg. And today we're looking at what people are referring to as the new normal. It's been brought about by shifts taking place in business, in how payment systems work, how meetings are being conducted, and customer services. New approaches to commerce that may ultimately change the way people live and work in Africa. Here's what's coming up. The lockdown may be restrictive, but it prompted a surge in online shopping. Learning is fun as the education sector embraces the new normal. I have no teaching background. You know, I'm not a teacher by profession or by study or by desire. And the chief executive at FNB shows us how a traditional bank can reinvent itself for the 21st century. We've been told to prepare for a world dominated by the Internet of Things at home. This means the linking up of uh, washing machines, televisions and security systems all worked remotely via an app. It's new aspects of technology that are also influencing further advancements on the factory floor. But here, they are strongly inspired by data. This is the stuff that helps international marketers understand the behavior of individuals consumers, things such as the prices they're prepared to pay, the colors they prefer, and the products they like. Today's world is one of algorithms and artificial intelligence, and these are the tools that new businesses in banking, media, tourism, and e-commerce are being built. Even public services such as hospitals, schools, and municipalities are strongly influenced by digital technology. 